What most discourages me as I listen to Christians talk about race today is the fact that so few understand that racism never goes away. It just adapts. So I think a lot of people think of racism strictly in terms of segregated schools, race-based chattel slavery, um, you know, those kinds of overt forms of racism without realizing that even though the laws changed, people found ways to get around the law. Let's not forget that Brown v. Board desegregating public schools was passed in 1954. But for the next decade and a half, people found ways to prevent African Americans from going to previously all-white schools. And it took other court cases, for example, Alexander v. Holmes County in 1969, that put an exact deadline of January 1970 for the desegregation of public schools for it to actually begin happening. And then even after that, folks said, well, we still don't want to go to school with people of a different race. And they started forming their own academies and their own schools. And so this is a manifestation of the way race never goes away. It just adapts to new conditions. So it's a movement from slavery, the most overt, overt form of racism, to um, laws that institutionalize segregation, which we know as Jim Crow, to now what some would call de facto segregation, which is never inscribed in words. It doesn't ever have to use black or white or, or race or ethnicity. And yet still, uh, people are segregated. Our schools now are still segregated. Our churches now are still segregated. And so the, the idea that because, you know, some laws were, were changed, which are good, it affects behavior, and I want those laws, uh, but to, to say that the human heart has changed is erroneous, and not to be able to see the way racism manifests itself in systems and institutions is, is very um, disappointing. One other disappointing aspect I'll, I'll point to is the desire for some Christians to withdraw from culture. They see changes, whether ideological changes that, that, that we see in increasingly secular society, a non-Christian society, in some cases, even an anti-Christian society. And the solution is, well, we've lost power, so, so, so let's go away and form our own groups where we still have power, even if it's in just a smaller setting. I think the way forward, and this is coming from a racial minority perspective, we've always had to engage with a group that in some senses wanted to marginalize us. And so we never had a choice but to engage in, in the broader culture that wasn't always friendly. And I think going forward in the 21st century, Christians ought to think very critically about strategically engaging and withdrawing and what that means and what that conveys, especially in light of the gospel, the, 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 the evangel. How are we actually drawing others to us if we are continually separating ourselves from the people who, who need the gospel the most? As far as what encourages me about Christians and the conversation about race, I think I'm increasingly understanding that there doesn't need to be a lot of people to make a difference. Jesus talks about the kingdom of God being a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, and yet it grows into a mighty tree. And I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a mustard seed movement. It is a multiracial, multigenerational, gender-inclusive inc in movement that is like nothing we've ever seen before. It has staunch biblical principles, historical, orthodox, biblical principles guide it, and yet it's very much a 21st century movement that stands in solidarity with all kinds of different people groups. I think it's minority-led. I think uh, women have a strong voice in this movement. And there's not a large group, but it's, it's, a, it's a significant group. It's a powerful group. And so I see Christians genuinely committed to racial reconciliation, truth, and justice. I'm seeing more and more Christians from the racial majority committed to these things. And so it doesn't take a lot of us, um, but it's happening. And I, I urge others to join the movement of God's Spirit in our day.